question uh, with yourself, Bruno, and this one is regarding mandates. Um, so this one comes from Matilde. Uh, Matilde says that they seek advice. Uh, there's a tenant that is a problem with the landlord. Uh, basically, um, Matilde is the agent. Uh, the landlord cancelled the contract with 60 days notice and secretly sold the property even before the tenant moved in. Right? Now, then the tenant moved in and now they can't find another property and have to leave at the end of June. Uh, the tenant is the tenant is now saying he won't move although the property is, has been sold. Uh, Matilda says then that uh, we have a 12 month mandate and everything has been done and then this then happened. Bruno? Sure, uh, so let me uh, try to give a short answer and then we can elaborate on it a little bit more. Um, so taking it a step back, uh, the first question that people always ask when it comes to this is the legality of a clause in a lease agreement that allows the landlord to cancel the lease. And this is aside from breach. So remember, there's multiple ways of canceling or terminating leases. It can be based on breach, but sometimes there's a clause in the agreement that allows someone to cancel that lease agreement. And just to answer that question, uh, yes, it is very possible to have a clause in a lease agreement that allows the landlord to cancel the lease in terms of the Rental Housing Act, but there has to be good cause and there has to be sufficient notice period, right? So now we start looking at the fairness component of this type of clause. Why do these clauses exist? Now, obviously, it's it's the argument to say that a landlord, apologies for that, um, it's, it's an argument to say that the landlord should be entitled to um, terminate a lease agreement for, for any reason whatsoever, right? And the Rental Housing Act does allow for this. But now the, the contradiction is that the Consumer Protection Act in Clause 14 speaks about fixed term agreements. And in Section 14 says that a landlord may cancel a fixed term agreement uh, by providing the tenant with notice to remedy any material breach and by giving him 20 business days notice. And so now everyone took a step back and said, wait, hold on, hold on for a second. That means that in terms of the Consumer Protection Act, the landlord is not allowed to cancel a lease agreement on any other terms other than a, a, a material breach or material failure by the tenant in the lease. That's the only circumstances whatsoever that a landlord is entitled to cancel the agreement. Now, unfortunately, as I had a look at this and I had a conversation with Nick over it, the problem is that this might be a gray area or somewhat debatable because my view, and Nick does share the sentiment, is that the Consumer Protection Act adds this right into the act to say, listen, if there is a breach of the agreement, must be on 20 business days notice. You have to give the tenant the opportunity to please uh, rectify his lease before you go ahead and cancel it, right? It's basically to assist the consumer in um, getting themselves into a better position where they may very well be able to perform. But does this really impact the fact that this agreement might have a qualification to the term fixed term? And why would that be unreasonable? Why would the Rental Housing Act that allows for something like this under reasonable circumstances be read against the Consumer Protection Act? If one tries to read the two together, it's basically saying, look, if the tenant's in failure, please don't go and just cancel and kick him out. Give him an opportunity to please perform. But if the agreement does have a clause that entitles the landlord to cancel, and that clause is reasonable and not an unfair practice and gives enough notice uh, or an opportunity for the tenant to find somewhere else, then that's not a bad thing. It should be allowable and the landlord should have that right. And the Consumer Protection Act, as far as I'm concerned, doesn't say that the landlord can't. It just specifies the time periods in uh, in an occasion of a material breach. So that's kind of my view on this. It is a gray area, so don't quote me on it just yet. But now to try put the facts of uh, Matilde's case to this. This to me sounds very strange. And 
on on the face of it, if if this landlord was not bona fide and he knew he was selling the property, he had uh, he was trying his luck. And now that the tenants moved in, he signed an agreement. He understood or foresaw the possibility that this tenant would not be able to stay on the property for the duration of the fixed term period, uh, foresaw it, and now utilized some clause in the agreement, presumably, that said that since he sold the property, he has 60 days notice, you need to vacate the property. Now, it does come down to whether it's an unfair practice, whether it's reasonable, whether the, the landlord actually did know about it and acted uh, malafide, so in bad faith by doing this, or whether he didn't and he just received an, uh, an offer very last minute, accepted it and gave that notice. So now the practical consequences have to be taken into account. As a landlord, uh, my feeling is that the onus sits on the landlord to prove that it isn't an unfair practice because all the tenant needs to do is ask and go, well, it seems unfair. Um, you exercise this right. Is it legitimate? Are you, in fact, intending to do A, B and C? Um, and did you act in good faith? So the problem that I have in this particular instance is he did sell the property. Um, maybe, and uh, practically speaking, I don't know what he's going to testify if this ever had to go to court. But the reality is he knew, he, whether he knew or not, the notice period of the 60 days in terms of the agreement came afterwards. And he sold the property, he gave notice that he had sold the property. So in terms of the agreement, legitimately he had sold the property. Is it an unfair practice? Uh, you know, possibly not. Was it reasonable time periods? Well, the tenant had agreed to it. It just seems to be very, very unfortunate. The timing just seems to be very unfortunate. Is there a straight answer to this? I don't think there is. Um, I do feel that practically speaking, the landlord will have an uphill battle because in the landlord's um, in the landlord's case, he actually needs to come and prove that uh, if if the tenant averts that this is in uh, contradiction to the Rental Housing Act, um, the landlord actually needs to come and prove that it's not. And I do feel that maybe taking something like this to the Rental Housing Tribunal is probably the best course of action to argue whether it was a legitimate cancellation of the lease, whether a term like that uh, can actually be uh, inserted in the lease and was exercised in a proper way. Uh, but it will, like Nick said uh, early on, it will definitely depend on the facts. They have it. Uh, so thank you very much uh, to yourself there, Bruno, for answering once again one of our mandate questions. And that does bring us to the end of today's uh, two questions and answers. And we'll see everybody again next week. Thank you. Oh, thanks, thanks, guys. Guys.